Gara is an awesome Warframe and a great asset, particularly in defensive missions. She's also, believe it or not, one of the first Warframes you can reasonably assemble yourself, even as a brand new player. And in theory, you can have her crafted before you even reach Mars. However, compared to a lot of other Warframes where you just have to do a boss fight over and over again to get the parts, putting together a Gara is a lot more complicated and requires you to do a whole bunch of different things. That's why I've made a comprehensive beginner's guide detailing every step you need to take in order to get your own Gara. Hence, this video is made for people who are pretty new to the game and who are probably still running with the most basic starter equipment. Now let's get going. First things first, you want to head to Cetus on Earth, and when you're there, talk to Konzu. This will start the quest Saya's Vigil, which will reward you with the blueprint for the Warframe itself when you complete it. Finishing the quest will also unlock the ability to run bounties in the Plains of Eidolon, which you will need for two things. The blueprints for Gara's component pieces, and standing with the Austron faction. There will always be a couple of different bounties to choose from, some aimed at lower level players and some more suited for people with high level gear. The first three tiers give you the chassis, neuroptics and systems as uncommon rewards. So what you do is simple, run these bounties over and over again until you've got all three pieces. You're probably gonna have to do them a couple of times, but it shouldn't take too many runs. Here. I'd recommend setting your game mode to public, so you can get help by higher level players in completing the more difficult tiers. Don't worry too much about being carried. We were all beginners at one point, and as long as you're participating to the best of your abilities, no one will mind. Just try to keep up. On that note, you will need to go to Fortuna and do the Vox Solaris quest before you start grinding for your Gara. Doing this will give you the K-Drive launcher, your personal hoverboard that'll let you traverse the plains of Eidolon faster. You'll also want to get 2,500 points of standing with Solaris United to get good mining gear. More on that later. But okay, you've got the blueprints now. This is where things get a bit tricky. You might have looked over the materials needed to craft the parts and thought, huh? Grok drool? Escher Devar? What's a Chark Electroplax? This is where you need to do some free roaming in the Plains of Eidolon, friend. This part is actually pretty easy, and can also be done without having to rank up with the Austron faction. All you need is enough standing points to buy any of the three fishing spears, and some luminous dye from Fisher High Luck. After that, just make your way out to the Plains of Eidolon and head for Garatot Lake, the first big body of water you find right outside the gates. Be sure to set your game mode to solo here, to not interfere with people doing bounties. Once you hit the shore, pull up your spear, toss a luminous dye in the water to make the fish easier to spot, and start skewering shark eels. You're gonna need quite a lot of them, but they're easy to catch. Then simply return to Fisher High Luck and select Cut Fish. Select all and slice them into their component pieces. Boom, you've got your Chark Electroplax. Rinse and repeat until you've got enough of them and you're done with the fishing. This step is gonna take a bit longer than the fishing. First up, you need some mining gear. Now you could go to old man Sumbat in Cetus and get your mining gear from him, but the most basic cutter he sells for 500 standing points is kinda garbage, and you need to rank up with the Austron to get better versions. What I recommend here is you head back to Fortuna and instead get the Sunpoint Plasma Drill, which is far superior to any of the mining gear you can find in Cetus. It costs 2,500 Solaris United standing points, which you can easily get by simply doing two or three bounties there. It's got a perfectly stable beam, a minimap radar, longer detection range, greater yields, it's just the best. Go get it. 
Now you want to dive into a cave to go mining. You can find ore out in the plains, but there's far more veins underground. I recommend taking a left as soon as you exit the gates, and you'll reach a pretty big cave almost immediately. Then go to work with your mining laser. The goal is to fill up the bar until you hit the highlighted area, and then release him. A perfect hit will give you greater yields. Now, you want to clean out the entire cave, and you'll probably need to do this around three times to get enough raw materials. You're going to need 100 pyrol, 120 copron, and 30 devar. Once you have that, you are done with the mining phase. However, these gems now need to be refined. Old Man Sumbat will sell you the blueprints you need for gem refinement. Pyrotic Alloy, Escher Devar, and Coprite Alloy. In order to buy the latter two, however, you need to be at rank 1 with the Austron. You start at rank 0. To rank up, go talk to Konzu and provide the following. 10,000 credits, 5,000 Austron standing, and 25 each of Nissle Pods, Erudite, and Grok Droll. Getting these materials isn't too hard, because they can be found in containers just lying around in the plains of Eidolon. Nissle Pods grow on the plains. Erudite can be found either topside or underground, and Grokdral is stored in containers wherever there are Grenier troops. My recommendation is to just always be on the lookout for these, whether you're doing bounties, mining or fishing. And by now you should already have a ton of them without even really having paid attention. When ranking up, I recommend choosing one of the mining blueprints as your reward, since you otherwise need to grind out another 5000 standing points to buy it. Once you have the blueprints, which can be reused infinitely, you simply need to craft 90 Pyrotic Alloy, 120 Coprite Alloy, and 25 Escher Devar. Note that in order to craft Pyrotic Alloy, you need a resource called Cryotic. This resource can pretty much only be found by doing excavation missions. In the very early game, your options are going to be Everest on Earth or Kilikan on Venus. Go to specific map points to start extractors, then defend them while they dig, and pick up energy cells from certain enemies to keep the extractors powered. Every time an extractor finishes a dig, you will be rewarded with 100 cryotic, together with relics and other rewards being dug up. Just run a couple of these and you should have all the cryotic you need, and you'll be done with gem refinement. So you've noticed that the chassis requires something called Cetus Wisps. Two of them. This little bugger can be pretty hard to catch, but with your K-Drive it shouldn't be any problems. Now you can occasionally get a Cetus Wisp as a bounty reward, but it's a very rare reward, and getting them that way is probably gonna take you a long time. No, use your K-Drive instead. Cetus Wisps are little stone life forms that hang around the banks of water in the plains. They're out both during the day and night, but they're easier to spot at night. You need to run up to them and touch them to get them. But you only have a short amount of time before they fly away, so you gotta go fast. This is where you want your K-Drive. Just exit the planes and make a zoom around Garatot Lake to see if you find one, and grab it as quickly as you can. If none spawned, just exit the planes, pop back in, and try again. In just a couple of minutes, you will have your two Cetus Wisps, and now you are done collecting material from the planes altogether. And with that, you can craft all three of the Gara component pieces. Hooray! But to craft the Warframe itself, you'll need something else. And that's Orokin Cells. As a new player, getting Orokin cells will by far be the most difficult part of getting a Gara, and you'll need not one, but three of them. It's not until you reach the planet Ceres that Orokin cells become an easily farmable resource. As far as this guide goes, that's what I recommend you to do, and I will show you a good spot. But I did say it was possible to get Gara before reaching Mars, and that's true. There are other ways of getting Orokin cells, 
For example, as a reward for doing weekly Nightwave missions, or as a random login bonus. Additionally, the bosses you face when doing assassination missions will always have a small chance of dropping Orokin cells when you kill them. In this case, your options are Captain Vor on Mercury or the Jackal on Fossa. Be aware though that the chance of either dropping a cell is abysmally small, with around a 2.5% drop rate. I'm just saying, it can be done that way. But if you have reached Ceres, I recommend running the assassination mission on Extan. Not only can Orokin cells drop from regular enemies, albeit rarely, they can also be found in resource containers called cell arrays. Additionally, in this mission, you fight two bosses at the same time, and both have a chance of dropping an Orokin cell upon death. They'll also drop the blueprints for the Mitre, the Twin Gremlins, and the Frost Warframe. So this is a mission you're gonna want to run a fair number of times anyway. But with some luck, you can get enough Orokin cells by doing this mission just a single time. And that's it. You've done it. You've got all the parts for the Gara. Now there's only one thing left to do while waiting the three days it takes to craft a new Warframe. Now go out there and wreak havoc with your brand new glass warrior. You've earned it, Tenno.